Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And today we're here to talk about, of all things, corded power tools. Now I realize this may not sound as fun, as exciting as, you know, the 20 volt, you know, cordless conversations that we've been having. But the fact of the matter is, there's sometimes when, you know, you may want to go with a corded tool. So we're here to talk about the top 10 corded tools that you may want to consider for your toolbox. Now, the three reasons that you might want to go corded are these. Cost, performance, and runtime. Yep. Yeah, basically, you know, if you go with corded, it's going to be so much less expensive than going with a cordless tool. And for some of those tools, either A, you're just getting started, or B, it's something you don't use all that often, and you don't need it to be cordless. So why pay the extra expense? Uh, as far as performance, what you're looking at is with corded, with that power, they can just shove more power through that motor, and you can get more torque and higher performance out of it. It's just as plain and simple as that. And when it comes to, to battery life or the lack of having a battery, that runtime is unlimited, or at least as long as you keep paying that electrical bill. So let's jump into the top 10 tools you might want to consider for your toolbox. First tool on the list is a grinder. Now, we're not talking specific tools. Like, I'm not going to say, like, you have to get this DeWalt grinder. Although DeWalt is kind of recognized as making the best grinder out there. But the fact of the matter is, any grinder you go with, the... Anything that spins repeatedly for a long time just eats up battery, man. It just sucks it up like a black hole. And you're going to be wishing you had a, uh, a corded tool quite often if you're using your, your grinder more than, you know, just the average joke. So, especially if you're doing welding, a lot of, uh, you know, touch-up kind of stuff, auto body kind of stuff, you're going to want a, a, a corded grinder for that kind of stuff. Next up, impact driver. Now, I know you're saying, Bear, you've lost your mind on this one. Lots of guys going with the Milwaukee cordless, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not talking about mechanics here. I'm talking for general contractors. Those of you who are doing stuff where you're pushing a lot of lag bolts and stuff like that, you know, like in this ledger plate here, if you're running that kind of stuff all day long, you're going to want the power and performance that you're going to get from a corded tool over a cordless tool. Next up, sanders oh my and i should say polishers by relation and, and that is again it's another one of these things that it just spins and spins all day long and you use it for a long run time it's not usually the kind of thing at least on the larger kind of sanders and stuff maybe on a little detail sander or something like that you can get away with a cordless one pretty easily but i found you know i was really excited when i got my first cordless sander and i used it two or three times and it sat on a shelf and i never touched it again why because, they, as I said, they just suck up battery like a black hole. Next, saws. Cirque saws, specifically. Now, I know you're saying, but Bear, you were just talking about this. Well, in this case, we're looking at in the inexpensive version. If you don't use a Cirque saw a lot, maybe you just use it for ripping sheet stock or kind of stuff, where you're using it in a stationary kind of position, that's a, gr a great time to go with an inexpensive but reliable Cirque saw. Uh, the skill saw here, it's not amazing. It's not going to make you breakfast in the morning or nothing like that, but it's a reliable basic use saw for when you need to do those kind of jobs. Now, the opposite side of the coin is what if you do need power? Well, in that case, you're looking at something like a framing saw, something like this, you know, worm drive skill saw, in which case you want the power and that power comes from a plug. Yeah, there are solutions out there that use batteries. But in the end, they don't have the same kind of torque that you'll see from a plug-in tool. Next up, I know we're talking things that spin again. We're t and But this time we're also talking torque. And trust me, on a router, a big router like this, oh, you don't want to be coming up short when you hit something hard there. You want to be able to chew through that wood like it's butter. And, and unless you've got a, a, you know, a good friend who's a beaver, you're going to want to go with with a router like this, a plug-in router. I have three or four of them. I know I don't do enough videos on them. Uh, it, it's, I did, I guess I don't do a lot of routing work these days. I need to get back into it. But man, these will make the wood chips fly. Next on the list, a hammer drill. Now, this is the kind of thing where I, it kind of goes into both categories. Often, this is the kind of tool that you gets used only every so every so often. It's not something you use every day, and but when you need that power, you need that power. So this is going to save you dollars as well as get you performance. 
trust me, I've got a, oh my gosh, it's got to be 30 or 40 year old uh, Black & Decker trade level. That's their, their pro version before they switched over to DeWalt. And, uh, and I've used that to, to drill through the walls on my house. And you're like, well, how, how hard can that be? Uh, my house is foot and a half thick river stone. So yeah, it, it's pretty hard. But, you know, but I don't do that that often. So when I do need it, I do need the power, but I don't need it something expensive. And, and I say, you can pick these up for cheap. Heck, you can pick them up used for like $5. All right, next up. Again, we're going to spinny things, but spinny things with torque, at least torque in the level that you're going to need it. Trust me, I've used a lot of rotary tools for a lot of the different hobbies and stuff that I've been involved with. And I've yet to find, even from Dremel, I've yet to find a cordless one that makes me happy. Now, there may be applications where a cordless one will work for you. But uh, in most cases, I think what you find out is that the tool will bog down and, and you'll be frustrated. Now, whether you're using a hand tool or a hanging tool like this, which I highly recommend, the, the fact is you're going to want that corded power for it, believe it or not. Because A, you're going to get that long run time, and B, you're going to get that torque in that tiny package so you're not, you know, trying to chew through those cuts and bogging down repeatedly. Snips, well, shears in this case. Here's another tool that, you know, it, it unless you are doing serious auto body or metalworking kind of stuff, it's one of the things that you may not use that often. And this is pretty much, I think, the, the, the pinnacle of the, I, I don't often use it, but thank goodness I have it. And it's the kind of tool you can pick up for cheap. I think you can buy something new like this for under $20. And for how often you'll use it, it, it it's it's going to be amazing because the power is always going to be there. You're not going to be you know lacking for power and not being able to get through the material. And on top of it, it's one of the tools that when you need it, you need it. Heat guns. Now, I know they've come out with some you know cordless versions, but the ones I've seen so far, uh, you're putting like a butane canister in it as, as well as a battery pack for the blower, all that stuff. I mean, how often do you need a highly portable heat gun? You know, to be honest, more often than not, I want it corded and I want a nice base for it. Like on this one, it's got the, the back there. See how it's flat there? It means you can set it down flat on a work surface and use it in a hands-free uh, situation. I won't ever buy a heat gun that I can't do that with because there's so many times where you need to be able to have two paws on the piece. Anyway, the, the fact is, you <laughs> running heat takes a lot of power and... Uh, you're going to want a plug-in for that unless you want to spend the extra money and then have to charge the butane and everything else. I mean, that that new one from, from uh, was it Rigid has? Oh, it, it's a beauty and it gets hot super fast. But again, unless you really need that kind of mobility, which most of us aren't, I suggest going with a quarter one. Now, we are talking about power and nothing talks about power more than a jackhammer. This is, we get the Bauer, you know, top of the line jackhammer, and this will, will shake your whole day up. But again, this is the kind of thing where, you know what? <laughs> I don't even know if they make a cordless version of this thing. You're going to need that power. And last but not least, lights. Now, I know we've talked about lights before, cordless lights and stuff like that. There, there was the M12 version, and they make some other ones. And those are nice, and they're fine and dandy for areas where you have to work where there just isn't accessibility to a power cord or something like that. But the fact of the matter is, most cases, you're going to have access to power. And, you know, even with LED lights, being able to plug it in, not having to worry about a battery, that's the way to go. You can, you know, mount all sorts of floodlights and everything. Make sure you've got plenty of light on your workpiece. Trust the bear. You're going to want a well-lit workspace. Anyway, that's all the bear has for you today. If you have any suggestions as to what you think maybe you should consider going with corded on, you know, share it down below. Let everyone else know. And uh, also, don't forget, if you like the video, why don't you go ahead and chomp the like button down over there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Hey, even maybe share the video. That'd be cool, huh? Anyway, that's all the bear has for you today. Just a quick and fun video making you reconsider maybe some of the things that we thought, you know, everyone's telling us we got to go cordless. Maybe that's not always the case. Anyway, you all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.